This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create atmospheric spooky text appearing through dense mist in the dead of night. This is an update of a tutorial I did many years ago on a much earlier version of Photoshop. Before we begin, if you haven't yet subscribed to Blue Lightning TV, Click that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. I upload a new one every week. Create a new document by going to File and New. Make its width 1920 pixels, its height 1080 pixels, and its resolution 150 pixels per inch. The color mode is RGB and 8 bits per channel. Open the Custom tab and click Black. Then click Create. Check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Click the Lock icon to unlock the layer and change its Blend Mode to Color Dodge. Make a new layer below it by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. Fill it with black by pressing Alt or Option plus Delete, which fills it with the foreground color. Temporarily hide the clouds layer by clicking the eyeball icon next to it. Click the foreground color box, which opens the color picker. In the hexadecimal field, type in 0, 1, 3, 8, 6, B. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Notice our foreground color is the color we just typed in. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft round brush. Make the brush size 600 pixels and the hardness 0%. Press the F5 key at the top of your keyboard to open the brush settings panel. Click brush tip shape and slide the spacing all the way to the left. Then close the panel. Before we brush color over the black background, let's quickly review the difference between opacity and flow. Opacity controls the opaqueness of the paint, while flow controls the speed at which the paint is laid down, much like painting with a spray paint can. I brush two lines using the same dark blue color we typed in. I'll open the levels window, and drastically increase the highlight level amount so we can see how they react. The top line's opacity is 10% and its flow is 100%, while the bottom line's opacity is 100% and its flow is 1%. Notice how the top line looks segmented, while the bottom line has no segments at all. This is the one we'll use to brush in the color. Make the clouds layer visible again. Make its opacity 100%, and its flow 1%. Brush over the black background mainly in the center areas. The result will look better if we enlarge the clouds a bit. To do this, make the clouds active and open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. At the top, make sure the chain link icon is active, which links the width and the height. Place your cursor over the W or the H as you drag the scrubby slider to the right. For now, let's drag it to approximately 150%. You could also just type it in. Make the background active and click the New Layer icon to make a new layer above it. Open your Horizontal Type tool. Since we want our text to be white, we'll invert the foreground and background colors by pressing X on our keyboard. Pick a font. I'm using Paranoia, which I included its link to in the video's description. I'll make its size 100 points, but feel free to adjust the amount based on the font you choose and the amount of characters in your text. The aliasing is smooth and the alignment is centered. Click on your document and type out your text. If you have two lines or more and want to adjust the space between the lines, known as letting, Highlight the text and go to Window and Character. Drag the Letting Scrubby slider to the left or right. To adjust the spacing between all the characters, known as tracking, 
Slide the tracking scrubby slider. To adjust the spacing between two characters, known as kerning, click between the two characters and press and hold Alt or Option and the right or left bracket key. Once you're happy with your text's letting, tracking, and kerning, you can close the character panel. If you want to adjust its size, click your Move tool and open your Transform tool. Go to a corner. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2019, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out or in. For later versions, just press Alt or Option as you drag it. Then press Enter or Return. To center it, press V to open your Move tool and move it. We'll convert our text into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively and allow us to replace the text without having to redo the effects. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Reduce its opacity to 50% and make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Make its angle 90 degrees and the distance 100 pixels. We'll convert our two text layers into one smart object by shift clicking the bottom text to make it active as well and converting them into a smart object. Change the blend mode to overlay. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it two pixels. Go back to Filter, Distort, and Wave. The number of generators is 1, the wavelength is 2630, the amplitude is 1 and 100, and the scale is 100%. The type is sine, and the undefined areas is repeat edge pixels. Make a copy of the layer, and double-click the copy's Gaussian blur to open it. If you first see this message, it's just letting us know that the smart filters will be temporarily turned off while we edit the filter. Just click OK. Make its radius 10 pixels. Go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Make the angle 0 degrees and the distance 40 pixels. Next, we'll smudge parts of the letter forms to give them an ethereal quality. However, smart filters won't allow us to smudge them, so we'll have to rasterize the layer to do this. Before we do, let's save space in the Layers panel by collapsing the Smart Filters. We'll be smudging just the bottom text layer to achieve the result we want. Make the bottom text layer active and right-click or secondary-click an empty area of it to open the Flyout list. Click Rasterize Layer. Open the Smudge tool and Brush Picker. Make its size approximately 100 pixels the hardness 0%, and the strength 25%. Brush over parts of the characters to smudge them. We can increase or decrease the brightness of any area of our text by making the clouds layer active and opening our brush tool. Make sure the opacity is 100% and the flow is 1%. To brighten areas, make sure your foreground color is white and then brush over the parts you want to brighten. To decrease the brightness of areas that are bloomed out, make the brush size smaller and press D on our keyboard to make our colors default to black and white respectively. Since black is our foreground color, we'll be brushing black over the clouds. Continue to brush black and white over your image until you're happy with the way your text looks. I think I'd like to increase the size of my clouds, so I'll open my Transform tool to increase its size.
This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe, and share.